Yeah. All right. Awesome. So uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, I'm Michael Naylor, and I'm uh, the director of the Maine Enneagram Center for Transformation and Wellbeing. And uh, if you've been following me along, I've been doing a lot of uh, interviews with the different types, which is really an awesome experience for me because I really get to see and hear the inside of their journey and not just the sort of the type structure. So uh, today, uh, really grateful that uh, Candy is here with us to uh, tell us a bit about her two with a one wing journey and um, uh, highs and lows, uh, agony and ecstasy, whatever's there. So uh, thank you for being here. I'll just uh, turn it over to you and just maybe uh, say a bit about yourself and how you, how you got started. All right, well, thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be here. It's been a long time since I've been able to talk Enneagram. Um, I've been doing this for, I've been, I like to say I'm still a student. Um, there's so much more I need to know, but I've been a gracious student of the Enneagram for about 20 years. So I've been, I've really been in the trenches in understanding the system and understanding myself. Um, and yes, I'm a two. Um, and I say that I say I'm a one wing because um, I really feel um, really connected um, to the reformer style, but we'll talk a little bit about that. But yeah. I really do. Um, I always say I'm a two with a one wing. So that's awesome. That's me. <laughs> awesome. Well, so uh, Candy, when did, uh, how did you come up uh, across the, the Enneagram and learn about your type? And what, and what, where did you start? Do you remember? Yes, I do. Okay. So let me tell you, like, this was like 20 years ago. I live in Maryland and um, we have some really good teachers here in the area, but I was looking for work. I was not working and I actually answered a newspaper ad for a training developer for Teresa Gale and um, Marianne Wampler in Maryland. They had a company and they were looking for someone to design their training programs. And that is my background in training and development. So I hmm. met Teresa that day and she offered me a position um, that week and she shared what it is I would be developing and it was the Enneagram. Wow. And I have to tell you, it was divine. Like I know that it was intentional for me to meet her mm. and get that job and do what I did because I was already, um, you know, I'm just a regular working girl. I'm just a regular working girl in Maryland, but I've always had a thing for astrology. I've always been interested in other people. I've always been intuitive. And my mother, who's a Scorpio six, taught me that. And, you know, so when I, when I, you know, took the job, I learned about the system so I could design around it. And it changed everything for me. It was highly impactful for my life in so, so many ways. Well, well, so, you know, sometimes, uh, in my experience, when I learned about the fact that I, I'm a type four, I, I was rather shocked and horrified. Um, yes. it was, I felt like, you know, Don Riso had kind of stripped off all the layers of my cover and looked inside and how would, how would he get in there and walk around and write about it? So I mean, what, what was true for you? Ooh, okay, so what was true for me was, um, Again, like you described it, it was it was similar to that. So I knew I was a you know I was a Capricorn. I was under the astrology. I was a Capricorn, so I knew that right, and I understood that. But when I read uh, the Giver, and when I under when I read it, I think I cried. I remember mm. being upset, you know, and I, and I was uh, struggling with. I didn't understand, um, and and it was so, yet it was so true. Um, to to the way I was um, going about things and even how I felt, so I felt justified. I felt I felt validated when I read it, but then I also was like, like, what do I what what does this mean? But I think because I was already kind of channeling in on myself and others so well, mm -hmm. I was even more open to find out more about it. Awesome. And so awesome. I just, I dug, I dug, I went all, I went in, I went in, I went in the crates, I bought all the books, I'm looking at my shelf now, I still have books, <laughs> yeah. I tried to sign up for all the class, and I did, I tried to, I 
when I first got introduced, I did everything in my power to understand. And uh, hmm. I was I was determined to understand. <laughs> yeah. but anyway yeah. yeah yeah so you got really passionate about it which which is i can certainly identify with myself uh i felt like i had struck gold even though it was kind of painful yes. but but uh so what are say a little bit about you know some of the type two uh patterns that you identify with and 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 you know and how you've worked with them over time mm. all righty so, <laughs> so, so uh, okay so i went to um i was i was i, I was had the privilege of going to um, helen palm helen palmer's mm -hmm. class mm -hmm. and one of the things that i understood uh or identified with was pride um having a strong sense of pride um, just in my childhood pattern. That was huge for me. Mm -hmm. um, understanding that I grew up, um, you know, my, my family was, you know, poor and we had challenges, um, mm -hmm. a lot mm -hmm. of challenges. Mm -hmm. And nonetheless, with all of that aside, it explains how I jumped into the role that I did uh, mm -hmm. or how I kind of, um, even without me, um, knowing what was happening, I was uh, trying to help my mother and trying to, and not trying to, but actually jumping in and um, having pride around that up until mm. my teenage years. And mm. um, uh, even having the ego of, I was the mother um, at a certain point because I, I had so much responsibility and I was mm. doing so much. Yeah. Uh, that was definitely my story, definitely. And so many people around me, so many, so many kids around me at that time were in the same position I was. We were home alone. We were taking care of ourselves. Our mothers were working mm. and that's what we were doing. We, and, and I in particular had a sibling. So I took care of my sibling and yeah, mm -hmm. all of that. I read about that. And then, so, you know, the stress and security, uh, the, you know, what was I looking like in stress? Um, I was able to see and observe that learning mm -hmm. how to observe myself in action that shit was scary mm. just watching myself no awesome. show up the way the way i showed up it was wild <laughs> um but mm -hmm. but was what was even crazier about that time was um it was it was scary for me because i was discovering all this amazing things about myself but i was in it by myself yeah. I was by myself. So, uh, so when you talk about, let's say the stress, you know, stress direction for the two, uh, how, how, what's your relationship been with that? <laughs> um, so it's That's been, it's been something I had to manage. I'm trying, and even to this day, like I said, I kind of go, you get fierce? Go, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I would say um, what I notice when I go into stress is there's a there's a great deal of anxiety, mm. um, and I and I also notice there's some um, a lot of anger mm -hmm. and resentment and and um, really direct. Um, I become even more direct in my communication. Mm. Uh, and yeah, um, and do you notice, you know, some twos will say, you know, going to that stress point of eight that for some of them happens quick and they just like they're a dragon and here they're coming and tell you exactly what's going on. And then afterwards, they're like, oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. And, and other twos uh, can have a hard time getting to that point. It may take them years before they kind of own that part of the, you know, the pattern with the eight pattern. And so mm. it sounds like you had pretty easy access to it. You could be oh, kind of man. A... Yes. I, no, I can accept. I, yes. And I would say that I'm um, just in doing the self observation because that was a big part of it. Watching myself standing back and just observing myself, observing myself when I was um, even in my fourth space and even mm -hmm. in the eight, just noticing all of it, um, I would say 
I'm very connected to uh, eight, probably because of the circumstances and things that I've been through. Um, mm -hmm. I've had to protect myself. Mm. Yes, I'm a two, but um, mm -hmm. no, I, I've had to take care of myself. I've had to take care of my family and I've had to protect myself. So I would say I'm strongly, mm -hmm. I strongly identify with that. Awesome. Awesome. And I can stay in that space for a while. Mm -hmm. I can stay there for a minute and I'm okay being there when I am there. Yeah. Yeah. And so I don't know if you remember the conversation about the missing piece, which is, yeah. uh, you know, whatever the stress point is, the healthy manifestation of that point is called the missing piece. So, you know, the end mm -hmm. goal is for the two to be able to go into that eight space when it's needed and to really, you know, hold the line and call a spade a spade and, you know, have the capacity to own their own territory and let people know, you know, don't mess with me. Of course, yeah. the less healthy is I, you know, massacre people and, and watch them, uh, you know, bleed on the floor and just say, you know, too bad <laughs> for you, right? But so it sounds like you, you, you've navigated that and probably experienced a bit of both, I would imagine. I would say so, yes. Most definitely, yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so you've uh, said this a couple times, the self-observation piece, and I, and I often uh, think that one of the biggest gifts of the Enneagram is it has given me tools to observe my ramshackle personality and how it takes off without my permission. Go, right. There it goes again. Come back. Uh, but say, has there been particular things you've done that has helped you develop more self-observation or, or or just mm. basically the knowledge of the type? I think it's the knowledge of the type. I don't know. I think, um, so, um, so, so I also require a lot of structure and mm -hmm. I guess, um, yeah, I would say just understanding my type so well and mm -hmm. understanding, uh, the levels of development because that was a big aha for me um, yeah. mm -hmm. um i mean again when i when i um i have it right here when mm -hmm. i got this book that's so that's the best book i think ever <laughs> okay yeah. so you know yes i started off in one school of thought which again was was everything because that was my intro into the system but this door opens that mm -hmm. really took it to another level for me yeah. yeah and i connected um to the levels of development that was it so yeah. understanding that uh that structure mm -hmm. helped me to say okay when i'm in trouble because i do get in trouble um Sometimes I'll go back to that and determine where I am in the level and what I need to do to take care of myself. Awesome. And I might do that with therapy. Um, therapy is always my go-to um, to kind of help me through out, uh, out of those woods when I can't navigate on my own. Well, awesome. You know, uh, one of the sort of kidding jokes we used to say is that the two was great at getting other people into therapy but they would forget to get themselves into it. But that sounds like you have. Not me. That's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. That's great. Well, so, you know, I was thinking about like the levels of health and one story we have sometimes is that when the two was healthy, uh, they're naturally generous, but they don't feel like they have to give. They have a kind of intuitive wisdom about when to give and when to stand back and, and they embody something called the clean heart. Like I, I'm loving and generous, but there's no strings attached, right? And then of course, under pressure and stress, I might get uh, clingy or, or you know, hang on to people or take captives. Uh, so what, what's been, how would you describe yourself at your best and then when you're under stress? Mm. Okay, so I'll do best first. When I'm at my best, I would say I did learn to be a healthy a healthy giver. Um, over time, I recognized, especially in my 20s, um, how I was really hell-bent on being the one to save the day. Oh, I'm sorry, I lost my light. Okay. Being the one to save the day. Um, mm -hmm. And I was really preoccupied with relationships and I was preoccupied with being the best friend and the one that everybody can come to. Mm -hmm. Well, once I understood that and then I did the observation, 
Um, and I did, the, Lord have mercy, and I did the work. Sorry. Sorry. That's all right. Yeah. That's I'm all right. Really more, more structured than this. This is terrible. This is just a terrible experience. But anyway. Your, your light is not cooperating with you. Oh, not at all. Lord. Okay. Sorry about that. That's okay. Um, I'll still try to work on it, but. Anyway, yeah, yeah. I, I would say that at my best, I learned that I, I learned to ask myself this one question. If I do this um, and and I need this person in the future to do something for me, or if I need them for any reason and they can't, how's that going to make me feel if I do this? And so I based my giving on that. And, mm -hmm. I, and I still to this day ask myself that question. Mm hmm like mm -hmm. what's my what's my motive here why am i giving what do i need i mm -hmm. still check in with myself from time to time to see mm -hmm. or make sure that i'm not i'm taking care of myself good good well you know my my wife is also a two with a one wing mm. and the thing that she's had to really work on is not giving help too quickly because She's like out oh. of the, uh, out of the chair of giving before she even decided whether it's the best thing to do. She just like goes there, right? And and yes. she loves she loves to give, but learning to recognize when it's time to just you know draw back from that has been a a, a real growth uh, journey for her a because time for her. yeah yeah she's just wired wired to give and of course too as you know they give you the the shirt off their back if you need it uh, they tend to be extremely generous so um sounds like you do a little check-in with yourself like why what what what's what's up for me what you know am i am i expecting them to give back to me am i doing it because i don't want to lose them or am i doing it because it's just from the generosity of my heart um so uh say say some more about that you have any examples of when you might you know have been an over helper yes. is that something that oh you, yes Yes. So I don't have children of my own. And I think, you know, by, by just being a natural, um, just, just being nurturing just mm -hmm. naturally, um, I probably overstepped my boundaries and spaces like, um, like with my sister and her, and her daughter, I could have, um, taken a position of, I can, let me help you with her and mm -hmm. her being an eight, um, not, not, <laughs> not resigning to that in no kind of way. <laughs> like, no. Uh, yes, I'm having these challenges, but I have, I, you will not, you will not come over here. <laughs> and she would not let me. And she, and in my mind as a giver, you need me. Um, I'm, I'm doing this mm -hmm. and you need to do this. Let me help you. Um, you know, and we have a small family and, and our mother passed when we were young. So mm -hmm. I definitely took that position of, you know, hey, I know, I know the way. And she wouldn't yeah. let me do that. Yeah. That's, I, the big, that's the biggest example. Yeah. Well, that's a great one because I know Tusa said, when I have a sense of what the person needs, it feels like a fact, like, like I know what you need. And so how can I convince you or, you know, to get you to see that I, I have the best plan for you? And, you know, it's, it can be so strong, uh, an emotional reaction that I sometimes can't notice. Oh, wait a second. That may not be true. Uh, and they mm -hmm. may not they may not even want my help. Uh, that's true. Yeah. So so that's kind of like, you know, I can say that uh, the gift of the two is, you know, being intuitive, sensing people's suffering wishing to relieve suffering and then when they get sort of overcome by that pattern it, it ends up sort of doing the opposite so uh how how do you take care of nurturing yourself What's... so i don't do a good job of that mm -hmm. um i think i do um i don't do a good job of that i don't mm -hmm. um like i think going to therapy is a big part of doing something for myself is healing. That's a constant process for me. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm in a good place in, you know, in um, just identifying some things that I need to work on. 
And I think that's a big part of taking care of myself, um, making sure that I'm healthy and taking care of myself in that way. But mm -hmm. I would like to do more for myself. I recognize that I'm not doing as much as I could for mm -hmm. myself. Well, when you think about, you know, the direction to four mm -hmm. uh, and all the potential for, you know, individual self-care and creativity and sounds like, you know, you're already working on the emotional honesty, the depth of your feeling in therapy. But, but do you have a, a creative uh, passion that you... Mm. Yes. Yeah. Tell me about that. Uh, so, yeah, 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 yeah. So I also, you know, I also love to say I'm an artist. And so aside yay. from that, I'm, you know, I'm a photographer and I've been studying for, um, it's been about six, six, seven years now, and I'm getting better with my craft. I'm mm -hmm. learning how to um, be more confident in my skills and, um, you know, just, I feel really good about uh, where I am in my artistry. And I tap into that very easily, very well. Um, I can come up with ideas very easily off the top of my head. I can create on the, mm. on the fly. Ah, um, beautiful. Yeah, I think I'm, yeah, I think I'm a, a yeah, I'm a, cre <laughs> I'm a, I'm a strong creative person. Well, what, uh, and what are the kinds of things you like to, you know, take photographs of? Wow. So people um, that I like, um, I do a lot of candid photography. So I do events. I go to events and I take oh. pictures at events. That's where my strong point is. And most recently, um, teenagers have been my biggest client, um, proms, graduations. Uh, for the past couple of years, I've been doing a lot of teenagers, really? uh, which I love because I can capture their personality. You know, it's an awesome group yeah to take pictures of because yeah. that's what they're right right there yeah like they're right there and if you work with them carefully you can you can bring out their personalities and mm -hmm. and i love doing that without even talking enneagram with them it's just something that i love to do it like working with young people that's awesome that's awesome man. Mm -hmm. yeah and so um this is the time of the year when people are graduating. Are you doing a lot of photography at, at different schools or? Uh... No, so it's really word, word of mouth and people are reaching out to me to do these things. But, you know, I was, I think I shared with you, I struggle with social media um, mm -hmm. in the last couple of years. It's been a real tough space for me to be in. And that's, a, that's one thing I've been doing to take care of myself is not going in that space. Mm -hmm. But as a business person, it hurts me. Because mm -hmm. as I do so much better, um, I'm not getting as much work as I could. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm trying to work through. I'm trying to figure out what's in the way for me. Why mm -hmm. did that platform, what, what is it about that platform that um, disturbed me? And what can I do to get back in it? And that's what I'm trying to work on to this day. Like, I'm still not there yet, but I'm yeah. getting there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's it's like learning a new language. Uh, it certainly was for me. Mm -hmm. uh, and once you got it, then then it's just uh, available. But but it's all learnable. And uh, certainly, the challenge for the two is to make sure you get help, and mm -hmm. and again all of that. So so one of the things that um, I've noticed about twos mm -hmm. is their empathic heart. They have such empathy for for people and being able to read where they're at emotionally. Uh, has, mm -hmm. that, has that been a part of your journey? Yeah, definitely. Um, but I don't, um, let me just say, and I don't know if this is true for you too, but it's not something that's on for me all the time. Like um, I've been real, you know, I haven't, so I haven't been practicing if you will. So mm -hmm. for me, it's really, I don't know. I guess it's fair to say I'm more observant mm -hmm. in others versus mm -hmm. expressive. I'm not in too many situations where I, so I'm in customer service. So I will say that in that space, um, mm. I excel mm. at providing the service to customers. Yeah, yeah. Customers like dealing with me 
mm-hmm. and I'm very successful at um, helping them. So you take care. So I mean, you take good care I of them. I take care of them. Mm-hmm. I can yeah. take care of customers. Um, awesome. I yeah. So I would say in that space, I'm really empathetic, but not. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, you know, I don't want to water this down. I am. <laughs> I am. Yeah. If when yeah. I'm not pissed, <laughs> when I'm not pissed off, I'm. <laughs> well, you know, that's when the tight. That's when the aid energy comes up. So that's uh you know, yes. gotta, you got to use it. So, so for you, uh, what have you, you know, as you're learning about the type and seeing this whole, it's like seeing a kingdom open up inside yourself, you got the levels of health and the directions and all that. What are, what are the experiences, the two experiences that you really like that says, you know, I really like this, this part of me, this tuness when it's operating, you know, this is a, one of my gifts or, or yeah, you know, yeah. What is it you like about being a two? So, okay, that's a good question. I think. So I think what you just mentioned, and I'm probably way more empathetic than I give myself credit for. But mm-hmm. I think it's my ability to. Okay, it's my ability to listen. Hmm. Mm-hmm. I feel like I have a strong way of being present with someone when we're speak, when we're talking. Mm-hmm. Um, so much so that I can be resentful because I don't have that for myself. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so I've learned to be that for myself in the last recent. When I turned fifty, I said, "Okay, so I got to start." Feeling, figuring out a way to be that that same thing that I'm able to give to someone else, listening, mm. effect, attentively, mm. give that to yourself. Mm. And so if it means that I have to talk to myself because mm-hmm. that's because I can listen and be still and not be distracted by phones and all everything else that's happening, mm-hmm. then that's what I'll do for myself. Hmm. But it's come down to that because the whole world is distracted. And and I, I feel that to come across people or to come across someone who can listen attentively hmm. in a space and be present is rare. Hmm. And so I love that I can be that for others. That's awesome. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate that. And I think you're really right on. Uh, and how do I learn to to give that space to myself. Uh, and uh, so sounds like you're, you're doing that's kind of the cutting edge thing. So so one of the things I, that occurs to me when I first learned about type four, mm-hmm. and of course, Don had just mapped out the whole whole story high and low. Mm. I thought, well, it should take about two weeks and I should have this stuff handled. You know, this is going to be Easy peasy. And it's like, uh uh-uh, it was not. (laughs) I got to watch myself thousands of times repeat a pattern and go, wow, even though I know what the pattern is, it it doesn't care. It just does it, right? And so it took, you know, progress has been slow but steady. But I had to give up that that quick march to the mountaintop. Uh, What's been true for you in terms of, you know, what you discovered and then – your arc of change. Mm. So what the biggest thing I had to learn with this system was that I, is that I, (laughs) so as a two, Mm. I think when I first learned about the Enneagram, I put myself in a, in a preacher space. And what I mean by that is I came across as someone who had all these answers, um, especially in my community. Yeah. Um, but what I had to learn with the system was that um, this was not something that I, that I could give anyone. And I think I tried so hard to give it. Yeah. I mean, it was something that I was giving mm-hmm. to the, you know, again, to my community, hey, I, this is something that's going to help you. This is, mm. you will understand. It will, um, 
you know, it would connect you to God. I mean, it and it did for me. It's mm-hmm. it's no, it's no, you know, mm-hmm. um, but but I got heartbroken over that. Over the yeah. years, it just broke my heart that nothing I I could I didn't have anyone around me, not my family, not my friends, not the community that I did touch. And when I say touch, I mean with the, the with the tip of my finger, I touched them. Hmm. Not even in a deep way, in no way. It was a touch. Yeah. But no one. Yeah. Um, I couldn't give it away. I couldn't. Yeah. Michael, no one. <laughs> I, I hear you. I had to, I had to, it took me years. Like you said, just keep, you keep bumping your head, right? It took me years to say, let it go. Mm. Like maybe this was for you and you only, mm. you know, the teacher in me is like, no, no, no. Mm. I, I was, I was, I was given this information, you know, mm-hmm. um, um, I'm a, black person i'm a regular person in this regular space i'm supposed to bring this to people i'm supposed to uplift others and this mm-hmm. is why it was given to me yeah you know, i don't know i don't think i don't think that's why well i, I think you really i don't know yeah you well i think that's such a powerful <laughs> observation because so you know i've been in uh, recovery from addiction for many years and yes one of the things that we talk about <clears throat> is that you cannot control, cure, or change another person. Meaning you can't give your sobriety away, right? And But if you do your inner work, the idea of attraction, not promotion, starts to make sense. So I think of anybody I tried to get to learn about the Enneagram, never happened. Just It wasn't until I stopped trying that you know, uh, teaching a, a workshop, people show up because they want to learn, but I didn't have to try to get them there, right? And, but right. That, that's a, I think that lesson that I can't give my whatever wisdom I have away. I, I can live it. I can try to become, you know, a more loving, conscious person, and that will go where it goes. But it's a, it's an interesting dilemma because I everyone I know, when they've learned about it for themselves, it's like, all right. I got to get my family involved in this. Let's go. You're a type three and this is what you're doing. And, and they're going like, <laughs> so yeah, it's a, that should be in the books, you know, first page of all the underground books is don't try to change anybody with this. Your hands are full with yourself is what my teacher said to me. He says, Michael, your hands really are full with yourself. Well, you don't even have time for these other people. I went, well, but I should be able to help them. <laughs> So yeah, you do feel that way, especially when you are around people who in your mind or from your perspective need help. Yeah. You know, I'm in the center of that, you know, yeah. where I am and just the situations that I've been through and saw. And I did I had that attitude. I I, I just was like, Oh yeah, this is this is the answer. I know that I'm supposed to. Yeah. Um, but but I didn't have that experience. It was the opposite for me. It was mm-hmm. not the same. Yeah. And so I started to get scared and then I mm-hmm. just kind of retreated and said, Okay, so I'm gonna let go. I'm gonna stop trying to uh to change um people, mm-hmm. so to speak. I'm gonna let it go. But it took me years to talk myself down from it. And yeah. I'm probably still, I still pray to God today, like, am I supposed to, you know, uh, lead me, you know, mm-hmm. lead yeah. me in the direction? Because if I'm supposed yeah. to, mm-hmm. then then let me get there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it, I hear you. And it's, uh, you know, uh, I think that two was a one wing. It's just really wired towards helping and, you know, uh, bringing honesty and quality living and telling the truth and, and love, Absolutely. And, you know, and that's how you're hardwired. And uh, then the question becomes, and this, this is sort of aside from this, but my, in the, in the school I'm involved in, which is the critique work, my teacher would often say, you're responsible for healing yourself. And as you do mm-hmm. that, that will touch other people. And that's yeah. pow- that's powerful, but mm-hmm. try and and that's hard to accept because you see the suffering and you want to end it, 
But if you continue to work on yourself and develop more integrity, honesty, compassion, that that, in a sense, is an energy in and of itself that touches people. And maybe it touches them silently. So, you know, uh, like yourself, you know, my, my prayer is, you know, uh, that will be done. Show, show me the way because, uh, you know, they're not listening to me. I'm trying to, you know, plug it into their brain and they're going, oh, no, that's interesting. And say, no, it's more than interesting. It'll transform your entire experience. And they're like, nah, not interested. So did you end up getting or developing a support system of people around you that you could feel like, oh, I'm amongst people who understand this? Initially, yes. I would say in the first 10 years or so, I did more work um, trying to find um, support and being a part of some of the small groups here in Maryland. And I did do that for a little while. But then, like I said, um, you know, some of the famous ones I could think of is um, like just advocates, um, you know, just just being the crusader in me was like, well, okay, no, okay, so I could be in these communities and that's okay, but I want to figure out a way to bring diversity. So I then took that idea in my own way, mm -hmm. but I didn't garner the support locally that I, I don't, I don't know what kind of support, I don't even know how to say what kind of support I needed. If mm -hmm. I could be fair, I, yeah. I can't say, because yeah. remember, I struggled with saying well, what I need. Yes, yes. So I yeah. don't know if I've even made myself clear to the community, hey, I'm struggling. I want to do these things and I need support. I don't know if I did a good job of that. I could have just took it on myself and said, well, no, 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 I got it. You mm -hmm. know, I can figure this out and, mm -hmm. and I can articulate the art Enneagram myself. And yeah. That didn't work. <laughs> Well, are, are, are you familiar with a woman named uh, Deb Egerton? Do you know who she is? Um, because she's, uh, you know, like at the International Enneagram Association, the thing that we, or well, I notice, is that for many years there's really a shortage of people of color, right? Yeah. You know? I, I know two people, yourself and another woman, uh, Patricia Seagraves, you know, who are uh, African-American. And it's like, well, how come this isn't yes. touching people? Is it is it too culturally uh, narrow uh, for other communities? Is it, you know, and, and but so it's all so there are people working on it because, you know, they want to. Uh, it's it's just awesome to have you know more representation of, of people of all the colors. I mean that makes it a lot more fun for me. But yeah, um, I agree. Yeah, it's, and uh, so yeah, so. But I, I was going to say, I think I know the answer to that. Okay. But I don't. So let me just say, this yes. is just based on twenty years of observation. Absolutely. What I've observed a lot in the community is um, their skepticism. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, it's a lack of knowledge and, and astrology is the one thing that I notice people connected to more. No. Um, number mm. two, I also noticed that there is a, it was a satisfaction with, so I don't know how many people I've tested traditionally or even with the quest over the years, but I've tested quite a few people. And what I noticed is that everybody was okay with identifying type. Oh, I'm a this. Mm -hmm. But what I noticed is that people wanted to use the information to protect themselves. Mm -hmm. okay. So I'll give you a quick example. During, okay. the, 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 uh, during COVID, someone reached out to me, African-American woman. She was divorced and she started to date. She wanted me, she asked me, would I give her new boyfriend the test because she wanted to know if she could trust him. She was a skeptic, six. Yeah. It made sense why she would request that. And you know, I I laughed and I told her, you know, you know what I'm gonna say. And she would tell me, Yeah, I know what you're gonna say, Cam, but go ahead and give him the test because I need to know. <laughs> but what I know, <laughs> but what I know about her and what I saw in everyone around me was that that was the piece that they mm. wanted it for. It was not for me. Yeah. It's not about understanding me. It's about understanding who I need to trust around me 
yeah. how you're going to act with me. Mm. Are you someone I need to look out for? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, I need to know about you because that makes me feel secure. Yeah. And that is what everyone will come to me about is those yeah. type of questions. Not can you just help me understand what's happening? I'm an epicure or what does that mean? Or help me, you know, let's have a conversation. It was never that it was, oh, mm -hmm. I'm a seven. Okay. Well, I'm gonna have my husband take the test. And I will mm -hmm. always go, no, that's <laughs> you're not, it's not, a, uh, you're not, it's not about understanding him. No, no, but I need to, he, you know, because he needs to know, you know, and it's yeah. like, no. Yeah. So, so well, I felt like it was something that people were okay with surface level. And I also saw it with whoever would take it to the next step and need, it never went beyond the two steps, but if he took it to the next step, it was used to protect yourself from yeah. others. Well, that's a very, very uh, astute observation. I, this, I, I would add to it and it's probably in, included in what you're saying, but when I would, I teach the relationship workshops. I often say, you know, most people come to this workshop uh, because they want to improve their partner. And I said, that doesn't work. You can try. I tried for years. It doesn't work. But if you work on yourself, some kind of change will occur. And, yes. you know, but, but that's just like, well, I, I know my husband's a type five. So, you know, I can help him come out of uh, his withdrawal. And it's like, uh, no, that's the opposite way we want to use it. But I, I do think that um, it seems like there's like beneath that level is when someone realizes, oh, my God, my patterns are causing me a lot of suffering and people around me. I got to use this for me because, uh, you know, I it, it's causing unnecessary suffering that and and how to get somebody to that level well i think usually people have to go through i, I can only speak for myself mm -hmm. a, a couple hundred failures in relationships and i started to go oh there's something in me that needs to change there's something fundamental in me that's responsible for at least 50 percent of every difficulty i have with people and that but you know if i hadn't if it hadn't been preceded by a lot of failure and sort of God grabbing me by the shoulder and putting my head on the, to the ground saying, you must change because if you don't, you're an idiot. Uh, I would have never gotten there. So it, it's, uh, you know, that's where I, I can't make that happen for anybody else, but it, I sure would like to. Um, so, yeah. Well, so in terms of some of the patterns, I know you've alluded to this, but the, one mm -hmm. of the one of the things that we say about the type two is they under stress they start to lean in to help before mm -hmm. they before they've been asked they can feel their gravitational center going towards the object of their concern. Is that familiar for you? No. <laughs> <laughs> I would have to say no. If I lean in, it's because if when I lean in, it's because I truly. It's because it it's a it's a decision to do it with nothing involved, and I don't do that often. And and again, my circle is small, but mm -hmm. um, no, I don't put myself in a position too often. Oh. Now, with my photography business, I would say that some of that comes spills over in business, in that I need to create stronger boundaries around ways that I can be successful mm -hmm. that I'm not I'm not over extending myself in business that it shoots me in the foot I need mm -hmm. to do better that way mm -hmm. but in terms of no I, I really do good at extending myself um and, and authentically I uh -huh. try to do a good job of that yeah not sort of I try. Uh, yeah 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 uh so I want, maybe we could talk a little bit about that, the passion of the two, which we, which is okay. often named as pride. So uh, how, what, what's your, you know, these passions always make us uh, uh, envy for the four, but for pride, like what, what, what do you know? How do you notice that in yourself when your personality is sort of in charge and taking you away? Mm. Just not being able to, um, just not feeling good about needing help. 
Like if I'm having a financial struggle or mm. if I'm in a pitfall of some kind, um, I don't generally, um, I don't know, how, I don't do a good job of asking for help. Mm. But um, in the recent years, I've had to push through that. And I've tried to do that by saying that um, it's okay for you to um, need. I also try to talk myself through these crises about this is temporary mm-hmm. and your need is temporary. Mm-hmm. You know, this is not long term. Um, it's only raining right now, but it will stop. Mm-hmm. So don't spend so much time trying to, uh, don't spend so much tra- time sitting there without help. You know, okay. just yeah. it's, it's only temporary and you'll, you'll bounce back. Yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting. Uh, when I first uh, started the journey in, uh, you know, spiritual recovery, etc., my teacher said, your first job, Michael, is to become an expert at asking for help. And so, like most people on the planet, they put that that last and they go and, and help before they're ready. He said, but if you get really good and asking for the best help. He says, think about what's the best mm. help I need that you actually become better at giving help. So, you know, in, in AA, for instance, there's often a push for people in early recovery to sponsor somebody. And mm. I remember my mentor said, you're not going to sponsor anybody for five years. You first have to learn how to ask for help, and then you'll be of service to people. So that was a, a powerful lesson uh, for me. And like, oh. Yeah, and he called that, he said, that's healthy selfishness. You know, when you're doing something that really benefits your soul and you don't want to let go of that. So um, that's something, yeah. So, you know, tunes get to, I mean, we all get to work on that forever, but it's a, it's an interesting concept that really helped me. So, yeah, that's true. That's hmm. very true. So anything... Uh, you'd like to add that's sort of been popping up that, that I haven't asked about? Mm. Well, let's see. Um, no, I, I don't think anything is, is popping out. I would say that, um, I would say a teacher told me once that um, the Enneagram is a lifestyle change and it, it truly is um, and was and probably always will be. Um, mm. It's, mm. it's a, it's a way of um, being and walking mm-hmm. and all of those things. So um, I would just say that um, what the, the only thing I hoped out of all of this and, and everything was to figure out, you know, um, I guess, okay, so I guess this is my one stuff when I say, I think, I feel like I, I'm supposed to do something with yeah. this. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know if this meeting is meant to um, mm-hmm. spark my heart, you know, jumpstart my heart. Um, yeah. Or to give me a newfound confidence or to, to say, you know, you really do, you really are okay. Um, and, and, and you, you should, um, you know, I don't know. I think I just try to figure out, Lord, what do I, what am I supposed to do with this stuff? I got so much stuff. Yeah. yeah. Well, what about teaching it, doing workshops? Uh, Michael, <laughs> Michael, Michael, Michael. <laughs> I do. Okay. So I did and I, and I did, but I think I got scared. So I think, yeah, I think I got scared. Like I said, I think I need to learn how to be okay with being successful and, 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 um, uh, well, I was going to say, I probably shouldn't say this, but I'm going to say it. Um, Mm -hmm. I need, I need to learn how to ask for support. Yeah. I don't think I've ever asked for support. Yeah. Because, because uh, I mean, I think you have this passion to help and to give this away. And so then the question is, where do you show up to offer it to people who might be attracted? And because, you know, you've done such really beautiful inner work around self-observation, 
You can bring a lot of hope, practical experience. Uh, so I just, again. I'm, I want to. I want to. I'll okay. just. Okay. I, yeah. I well, want to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, because it, it's, uh, it's like, it's my favorite thing to talk about. So how do I create this forum? And, and then I get to see people grow and it just always touches my heart like ah this like you know this is this is really something i love to be a part of and it sounds like uh you know it would be something that you know you have that passion you've been trying to figure it out so maybe we can have a couple. yeah yeah and i could you know i could see you easily being you know type two mentor helping people um so we could talk more about that because i think it's in your blood you know um, i think it is too yeah. So tell, you've mentioned a couple times uh, your, you know, your spirituality, your connection with God. I wonder if you would mind saying a little bit about that. Yeah, I'd love to share that because um, let me tell you, Russ said it. Um, he exp he gave us the analogy of what it's like to um, when the world fills your mind with with the the false with with everything that's bad. So being a baby and and uh, having no information or being connected to the mother in the womb and hearing everything and observing the world and all of that. And then that's how you, the ego is built. And, and so I always explained it by saying that it was all it was the essence is what God always intended for us. Mm -hmm. It's the part of us that he knows exists. Mm -hmm. because he gave it to us and mm -hmm. the world told us that no your essence is crap like mm -hmm. or no that's not you're supposed to go in this direction and we listen because what else did we know to do yeah and we just took it in that's what we did yeah. but through time we learn and we grow and we should be open to that essence and that is what god wants for all of us mm -hmm. and when i understood that i said yes father like i knew mm -hmm. that um, I was okay. Not only that, I need to say this in case anyone sees this, but I need to say this because um, there was nothing in the Enneagram that I had to attach to, um, that I had meetings to go to. There mm -hmm. was no preacher. There was no God. There was mm. no dude trying to, there was none of that. And yeah. no one ever taught me into nothing. It was always my journey. It was yeah. always on me. Mm. No one. It was no one to follow. There was nothing to follow. Nothing mm. was fo no, There was nothing to follow. <laughs> yeah. I just needed. It was for me. Yeah. And beautiful. And I had to say that in my culture because I'm like, no, no, no. I'm not trying to sell anything to you. This is mm. for you. Mm. This is your essence, not mm. not mine. Yeah. So. Yeah. I just have to say that yes, my my, my relationship with God got tighter after understanding that because when I did get depressed and when I was anxious and stuff, I knew, no, God was tapping me saying, no, 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 you're special. Go back to your essence. Mm. That's who you are. That's who you are. Mm, that's, that's you. Yeah. Um, and don't forget that. Yeah. And if that's all I was supposed to take away from this and it, oh, well. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's a powerful, a powerful thing to be a, a transmitter of that or be able to feel that uh, that connection with the divine uh whether you whatever you call it god spirit presence uh i remember one time somebody asked don like like where's god come into this and he said well where do you think presence comes from because that's the stuff of god presence that's you know and he was trained as a Jesuit, but, you know, really uh, tapping into that, that essence, that kind of, uh, you know, deeper quality of being um, mm -hmm. is uh, mm -hmm. certainly the core of the Enneagram. And I think you just expressed it so well that there was nobody saying, this is the church you should go to, and, or I'm the leader. It's like, use <laughs> this for your own growth and maturation, uh, take what you need and leave the rest. Uh, be discerning, uh, you know, nobody, there's no, uh, it's kind of like an AA meeting. There's no leaders in AA, right? Yes, it's like, yes. it's like we're all on the same level. So that, that's really quite an amazing thing. And uh, so, so when, just a, one more question or, or two. Sure. So when you were, 
Do you think back to when you were a little girl, like in grade school or high school, in reflection, if this was possible to do, mm-hmm. was there something you might have been able to say to her that would have helped her relax in her type's passion, you know, and uh, or if you're just thinking of little, you know, little boys, little girls in grade school, high school, who have that true passion and they're herding kittens to try to save people or get the say so what what's what might you suggest? Hmm. Hmm. I would suggest to her or anybody that age, um, I would say give authentically. <laughs> learn to give. I would say learn to give authentically. Mm-hmm. And I would say that and, and that would come with a lesson, but you just learn to do that. And because um, it's because being yourself is already, you're already present and you're being yourself, mm-hmm. but giving of yourself should be something that is genuine and it should be loving and it should come from a place of authenticity. And if it's anything else, then it can't, then don't do it mm-hmm. and be okay with that. Like you don't have to give a be. It's not, everything's not flowers and sunshine. It's okay. Say mm-hmm. no and move on. That's what mm-hmm. I would say. Say no and keep it moving. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, uh, beautiful. Just really, uh, Appreciate your wisdom and your life experience and just a lot of really lovely things that you shared. So, um, Thank you. yeah, and I will, uh, uh, I will send you the link, you know, do you mind this okay. going on my YouTube channel? Please, uh, by all means. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, I'll send you a couple of, uh, 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 some book titles of people who are really trying to work with, uh, you know, with the black community and people of color that, that might really inspire you. Next thing you know, you'll be teaching the Enneagram and, and walking right through your fears. But because uh, you have. Oh, that would be awesome. Please yeah. do. I would love that. Awesome. Okay. Well, look, just many blessings and many thanks. And I'm going to um, turn this off and uh, see if I can find the.